Wood and the forestry industry has always been part of our life. The material, the resource has always been very present for me and uh, meaningful as well because a lot of it comes from our family farm. With the pandemic, we spent more time at home. The idea of doing geometric art or painting on wood came across on probably an ad on Instagram or something like that. And I felt really inspired by other artists that I saw doing similar art on this type of media, medium. So I decided that I would give, give it a try and uh, see where it led me. And I was convinced that I'd end up burning most of my pieces because nobody wanted, wanted them, but I wanted to, to actually try. And I found joy in, in transforming the wood and putting my own creative touch to it and painting as well on it. There's definitely a process in transforming the wood that it needs to go through the table saw. I make lath specific widths and uh, thicknesses depending on what I'm working on, the size of the piece. And then there's sanding and staining and painting and then and usually on the backing which is made of plywood, I usually sketch out and then draw lines and then angles about where I want the piece to go and then I kind of go with the feel of it and uh, I change up the pieces. Some of these boards come from a barn that's approximately 150 years old. And over here we have a pile of mostly pine, I would say, that was milled by my father and husband on our portable sawmill. So that comes from the family farm as well. Okay. What about your stuff? Is this like, you like prepped stuff that you've got? Uh... That is some of my prepped wood that I would sand and finish off, stain and, and paint. I like to organize, <laughs> organize my things. So I've made little bins with different thicknesses and widths so that at least I know what I have. If I have, I need to prepare more before I start a piece. And do you specifically choose different kinds of wood in your pieces? Or? I like to change up the different types of wood so that because of how you finish them, you see the beauty of them and the grain of it comes out in whether you... Sometimes the same type of wood, if you saw it or cut it in a different way, the grain comes out. And, and I just, I enjoy bringing out the beauty of it. Unbelievable, the color that you have in here. Some of it's pink, sometimes it, it comes out as purple. It's just, really? yeah, oh yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing what time will do to, to wood. So then when you just preserve, like you just put some kind of clear coat on it or something to preserve it? To well, I clean it, it yeah. before this goes on a piece because it's well, obviously yeah. <laughs> dirty. Um, so I clean it. And depending on what I want to add to a piece with these lats, I sometimes will run it through the, the table saw so it's not quite as thick. But then I see the inside is just as pretty as the outside with the patina. And uh, But yeah, it'll, a clear coat will go on. It's not just geometric art. I guess you could find art like this or similar to this on Pinterest or Etsy or eBay to, to buy. But I like to think that I add my own personal touches with my painting on the, the actual wood lath, as well as the geometric scenery and, and uh, parts of it. So I like to think I combined both. I've always been a nature lover, so it just stems from there. I love creating the mountains, wildlife, the trees. I feel a deep atta like attachment and bond to even the materials that I'm using. So I'm trying to just be inspired by the sceneries, the pictures. I'm very fortunate to live in a very scenic area where uh, our family farm it has beautiful mountains on in every season and we live right next to, door to the Ottawa River and the Kalundra River. So I draw inspiration from the scenery. For sure the creative side of it comes from ideas that I have for a specific scenery. But yes, I do have commissions as well. So generally I get an idea from whoever is wanting a piece of what they would like included in the piece. But I always reserve 
it, you know, create a freedom on, on, on the piece as well. So whatever speaks to me, I try and find out. I, I ask them a lot of questions, which I'm sure they, they think that I'm a pain by the end of the process. But I want to make sure that it, if they're asking for a specific piece, it's because it has a special meaning to them. And I want to make sure that they're happy with it. I enjoy a, a little bit of both of having, creating something that is completely of my own imagination and also trying to balance creating something for someone else and hoping that through their eyes they'll also appreciate it. The feedback has been overwhelming because I've never put myself out there as an artist, but it's been mind-blowing how positive it's been and um, I never expected any of it. <laughs> I was mostly doing it for myself and um, I'm very grateful for their support, friends and family, and uh, or even it, it, it's going beyond friends and family now and I'm, I'm being contacted by even yourself and it was a pinch me moment <laughs> a little bit because I've always referred to this as being mostly therapy for me. This takes my mind off the seriousness of life it replenishes my energy levels whenever I come and create. I think we all need something to be able to enjoy. And we've learned in the past year that sometimes we can take things for granted. And, um, and then it can be taken away from us very quickly. And we all need to find that little thing that makes us happy. And this is mine. So...